The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus went to his home and his disciples accompanied him. With the coming of the Sabbath, he began teaching in the synagogue, and most of them were astonished when they heard him. They said, Where did this man get all this? What is his wisdom that has been, has been granted him? And his miracles, they are worked through him. This is the carpenter, surely, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Jude and Simon. His sisters too, are they not here with us? And they would not accept him. And Jesus said to them, a prophet is only despised in his own country, among his own relations and in his own house. And he could not work no miracle there, though he cured a few sick people by the laying of his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. The Gospel of Mark today shares with us a very poignant question. Who is Jesus? He went to the synagogue in Nazareth, his hometown, his kampong. His own family, some of them at least, and the townspeople were scandalized at him. They rejected him. The word that Mark uses in Greek means scandal. A scandal is a symbol of a crisis or a doubt which causes one to have a loose faith or lose trust in that person. That is what happened in Nazareth. The townspeople, people, his own people that knew him, fall because they cannot bring themselves to believe in this local boy, this kampong boy, who made a stir in other towns by his preaching and the miracles he did there. They were hearing things of Jesus when he went on his ministry. Things like eating with tax collectors and sinners, so much so, some of the Pharisees called him Beelzebul, the devil incarnate. All these things that he did overseas, curing miracles and all that, out of his, hometown, uh, his own town, they were surprised. Why were they surprised? How can this local boy, who come from us, who's just a carpenter, and you know carpentry in those days, the lowest form of jobs, like one of the local, you know, people that clean up the place, you know, as low as that. Carpenter, we know him so well. What good could come from Nazareth? As in John's Gospel, we, heard, we hear this. Why? No prophet came from Nazareth in the Old Testament. Nazareth is not even mentioned in the Old Testament. Although Ezekiel tells us about certain things in the first reading but no Nazareth. So what prophet can come from Nazareth? Jesus cannot be, cannot be so. And then his family, his family is quite modest, you know, people. They don't, they don't enjoy prominent place in society. So they are not aware of what's happening in other towns. Only they hear maybe rumors. So they don't seem to trust or have faith in Jesus. Although we are looking back now to Mark's gospel, we might be thinking to them, how can they be so silly? We know that he's Jesus, the son of God, now. But then, they don't know who he is, not sure. Who is this? They know of him, but all his miracles, is he working through somebody else or what? Who is he? So that he has to lose faith. That's why Jesus was unable to perform any miracles he only cured a few people by the laying of hands, as we are told. Why? Because he was amazed at their lack of faith. 
His own people. He was amazed at the lack of faith. Sometimes, my friends, we have to bear some certain hardships in life, like what St. Paul tells us in the second reading, a very important reading. St. Paul t- tells about how he's been tested. He calls it an angel from Satan because to prevent him from being too proud of what he's doing, to be more humble. He calls it a thorn in his flesh. Three times he asked the Lord to take it away from him. And what does the Lord tell him? My grace is sufficient for you. For power is made perfect in weakness. When we hear that in our own lives, we're thinking, what is all this about? What does he mean by this? Paul would prefer to boast of his weakness in order that the power of Christ may dwell in him. Therefore, Paul is content, he says, in his weakness, insults, hardships, all that, all his things that he goes through in life. Why? Well, simply, he says, for the sake of Christ. This is discipleship at its perfect end. We're all learning. We all go through certain things in life. And then he says, but when I'm weak, then I'm strong. I'll share with you a story what it means by that. I shared this story before. I went on a pilgrimage to Lourdes some years ago. And you know what happened at Lourdes? Our lady appeared to a young girl by the name of Bernadette in 1854. 18 times, no one believed her. And this lady tells her to dig into the soil with her bare hands. Water came up from there. And that water turned into a spring. Today, if you go to Lourdes, if you're fortunate to go to Lourdes, they have an altar there in the grotto where Our Lady appeared to Bernadette. And behind the altar, there's water gushing out from the ground. And that water goes into pipes where we get our holy Lourdes water. And, though, and the pipes go into baths. So you, there are people, volunteers there, who can help you if you want to pray for somebody. Of course, you can change and give you towels and all. A, there are rooms in there. Women and men are separate, of course. You can go and ask a volunteer. You can go in there and they help you. And they ask you what you want to pray for. And then they dunk you into this water. It was during autumn. The water was freezing. Anyway, I attended. There are different masses in the morning. You know, different languages. The English mass was very early. 5.30 to 6 o'clock in the morning. Still dark. Anyway, I went for the English mass with other priests, English-speaking priests. So after the mass, I was walking around, not many people, and I saw this man standing outside one of the baths. He was a Frenchman. So I went up to him and I said, uh, can I go in? Yeah, sure, he says, you know. So we went in and cut the story short. Uh, he asked me, he says, we're going to pray for what? Let's pray for family, friends, and so forth. And he dug me into the water, freezing. Came out, I dried myself, and I was walking around. No, still not many people around in the early morning. He came out, this Frenchman. He's standing there. So I went to him, and I asked him, I said, uh, what's your name? He said, Pierre. And I told him my name. I said, I'm a priest from Singapore. He said, so I can ask you one question, I said. Why do you offer your services to come here and help people into the baths? They're all volunteers, by the way. And he says, well, I led a very, very bad life. I was extremely weak. I was rejected by my own family. I what Jesus was rejected. I was rejected by my own family. And I later I became a drug addict. I was an alcoholic. I couldn't change. So I just went through it. So I had no friends. I lost my job. They told me to leave the job. Rejected. So I, anyway, my family lives in Paris. And only one member of my family, my sister, younger sister, had faith in me. And she said, Pierre, we're going down to Lourdes, which is in the south of France. You want to come with us? He said, Lourdes, don't waste my time, he says. He lost his faith entirely. He said, don't, don't waste my time. Anyway, he, the sister said, 
I pray for you. Wow, anything free, boy. He said, okay, okay. So he went. But he didn't want to join anything. So when the French mass was going on in the grotto, he was standing, he didn't join the mass, he was standing far off, if you know the place. But you can see what's going on. While the mass was going on, he wept uncontrollably. Until it was so loud, the sister turned around and came to him and asked him, Pierre, are you okay? He said, I'm okay. So I said, what happened? And he says, well, you know, I, hard to explain, but he said, all of a sudden he felt this overwhelming compassion and mercy come over him, despite how weak he was and rejected. The only one that did not reject him was God, through Mary, of course. He felt his love and his compassion and mercy. So then he told me, when I'm weak, then I became strong. So after that, I'm cutting the story short, and then he changed over and all that, and he made a promise that he will return every year to Lourdes and volunteer his services so that others like him, who are weak and rejected, can experience God's love and mercy. I thought that was an excellent story to tell now. What's happening in these readings today? You know, Mother Teresa, oh, now St. Saint Teresa of uh, Calcutta, she was asked when she was doing her work, is your work successful? And she says, God never asked me to be successful. God asked me to be faithful. And that is a success story. Do not lose faith. And when she was going through an operation, she failed to take any anesthesia in Rome. She was rippling in pain. And the doctor says to her, take it this way, mother. And Jesus is kissing you from the cross. And she said, doctor, can you tell Jesus to stop kissing me? Her pain was so great. So now we come to these readings. So when we go through certain things, when we are rejected, whether it's in the office or apply for an audition, you're not accepted. Sometimes even in the family, sometimes in the workplace, sometimes at school, sometimes in the church, you're not accepted. Always go back to these readings and say the faith. Sometimes when I'm weak, that's when I can become strong. Not on my own, but through the faith of Christ who dwells in each one of us. Oh Mary, how I call 